commercial tricycle and motorcycle owners and riders association uh, led by Alaji Mohammed Sani Hassan. Uh, the Road um, Transport Employers Association of Nigeria, led by Alaji Dr. Musa Mohammed, the Nigeria Association of Road Transport Owners, Alaji Yusuf Lawal Othman, Amalgamated Commercial Tricycle and Motorcycle Owners, Repairs and Riders Association, Akomoran, uh, led by Prince uh, Shamsuddin Adibayo Akpelogun. God is Good Mobility, led by Mrs. Wakpo Mogo Mogere. Mrs. Wakpo Mogere. Uh, and all members of uh, the leadership of transport associations are present, uh, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me say that it's a great um, pleasure and an honor also uh, to be able to interact with you today. Uh, I'm glad to see that uh, technology has enabled us to interact from different parts of the country uh, with very, uh, with, with great ease. I, I think that uh, this makes it easier for us to consult in the future. And I must say that one of the very first uh, takeaways from this meeting is that we must find a way of meeting uh, more often so that we can uh, interact and uh, get a sense of what uh, the issues and problems are in the road transport sector in particular. There's no question at all that your sector is vital for the, uh, for, for the development of the Nigerian economy and even for the running, the day-to-day -day running of the Nigerian economy. Anyone who has any doubt that uh, transportation is crucial uh, will see from practically every aspect of our lives that uh, transportation plays a, a, an, in, an incredibly significant role, whether it's the movement of persons, movement of fuel, or the you know, movement of food. Whatever you're moving, all logistic arrangements center around transport and road transport remains the major means of transportation in Nigeria today. For, the very, for millions of our people, services, goods and services, road transport remains the way to go. So I do not think that uh, government can uh, take road transportation lightly, which is why we are, we've created uh, uh, this platform. But I, I want to say in particular that it was in recognition of the importance of road transportation uh, to the economy that the Economic Sustainability Committee and the Economic Sustainability Plan, which was a product of the, the work of that committee, set aside uh, specific funds, the MSME Survival Fund, with a special focus and emphasis on uh, road transportation workers. You know, and it's, and that remains the position of the government. Now, we're also very concerned about, because yeah, the numbers are huge, you know, I mean, obviously the number of people, the number of road transport workers is, is huge. So making provision for such a huge number is extremely difficult, as you can imagine, because of limited resources. So we are, we, the first problem is that Limited, uh, we are limited by, by, by the resources available to us. But we were very, uh, it was very important for us that this process be a transparent process so that it's an auditable process. Anybody can check where um, money is going, who is receiving money, how many people have received money. And, uh, and this is one of the reasons why you know, we're extremely proud of the work that has been done by uh, the by the Survival Fund, uh, the, by the committee, uh, under the uh, the stake under the variable leadership of the Honorable Minister of State for Industry and Investment. I mean, they have meant in, ensured that this is a transparent process. It was at the uh, it was at the uh, urging of the Honorable Minister of industry, trade, and investment, 
that we brought in a public, uh, a private sector, uh, one of the very important private sector players, the chairman of First Bank, um, Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika, to co-chair uh, this MSME Survival Fund with uh, the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, so that <clears throat> we could bring in uh, some uh, private sector discipline and, and uh, the way that the private sector operates, efficiency of the private sector into this whole thing. So uh, we, we, we've, we've, we've tried to work on making sure that this is not just one of those things that is announced. There's a fund, and uh, the fund doesn't eventually get to you. So I'm glad to hear that uh, substantial percentages of people have received the funds. Uh, those who have not, those who have not, you can be assured that uh, once you have been, once your people have been enumerated, they will uh, receive, uh, they will receive their funds. But as uh, as you can imagine, there is a it, this uh, there is a limitation uh, of uh, of resources naturally. I've heard of, I've heard the various suggestions that have been made and some of the questions that have been asked. On the question of security, obviously that, that is a major problem and we're all faced with it. And I've also uh, taken, in, uh, taken on board some of the suggestions that have been made regarding you know, broader issues around the economy. I think that, that is correct and you're absolutely right that these are issues that we must confront. Uh, but but we, we have no, uh, the, the way that this works is that every generation of leadership, and including yourselves, because you're leaders also, are confronted with, uh, with problems, various problems. The problems differ depending on the time and depending on the circumstances. So it's up to you, us, to confront those, uh, to confront those issues. But, I mean, so this uh, security challenge, fortunately, uh, we now have a situation where uh, these, uh, we have a new set of service chiefs, a new set, you know, set of eyes, a new set of ideas, and uh, new energy. And um, they are working very hard to develop a strategy that they hope will be able to deal uh, with many of the issues uh, that we see around the country, uh, the issues of kidnapping. I've made road transportation very difficult, kidnapping, banditry, you know, uh, insurgency, etc. that have made not just road transportation, by the way, but practically uh, all uh, forms of enterprise that Nigerians engage in uh, uh, have been made quite uh, difficult. But we see a new resolution, and Mr. President uh, has had several meetings, Security Council meetings and uh, other meetings with uh, the service chiefs where we're trying to develop a strategy uh, for uh, handling the secu security concerns. Every other issue uh, that you've mentioned, all the very important issues that you've mentioned, especially around the economy and all that, you can be sure that day and night, that's the business that we're doing. We're working at those issues, and we want to make sure that the economy survives. What we're doing is not a favor to the, to the transport industry, no. <clears throat> we're not doing you any kind of favor because we realize the importance of the industry and we think that it's important that uh, this industry survives in the interest of our nation and our economy, in the interest of the people of this country, which is why we're so uh, focused on seeing that we're able to do uh, the best that we can. Uh, Mr. President, as uh, I said, has re uh, asked regularly about the progress of... Uh, the MSME Survival Fund. Uh, he's particularly, of course, concerned about uh, transport and what we can do with transport, uh, with transport workers. So you can be sure that we're going to be focused on this issue. One of the, <clears throat> one of the steps that, of course, you know uh, we've taken is that of, of taking away duty on, uh, on commercial trucks and vehicles. And certainly, we're going to be taking a good look again at this issue of being able to fund uh, commercial operators. And this ties in with the issue of, the, of 10 billion, the 10 billion fund that you are talking about. I think that in the end, uh, w w what happened is first, uh, from, what I'm, from my information, there was no uh, provision for it. <clears throat> there was no provision for it in the budget. 
It was mentioned, but there was no provision for it. The only provision that was made was for the survival fund. But what the Ministry of Transport is doing now, and, uh, and this is information we have from the minister, is that they are trying to get uh, funding from the CBN, from the CBN's own uh, private sector funds that they are giving out now to assist the transport sector. So I think that we are still going to be able to do more uh, working with uh, the Ministry of Transport and uh, the CBN. I hope uh, they will be able to put together a package which will be able to assist uh, the, the transport sector. But let me just say that um, you know this is information that I've gathered. We are going to work hard at it. Money is not easy to come by today. So everybody is, we're, we're all struggling to try and see what we can do. So don't tell me uh, in another one week that, uh, Mr. Vice President, you promised us uh, 10 billion. I have not uh, made that promise. I'm saying that we are going to work hard to make sure that uh, the CBN and Ministry of Transport are able to provide whatever they can to support uh, the uh, commercial, commercial transportation sector so that people can borrow and all that. I like the idea of the transport bank. Yeah, I like the idea. But that is not the same as policy, you know, as you can imagine. If you are going to set up any kind of funding institution, it requires uh, a lot of interaction between um, all of the relevant agencies and all that to put it together. So uh, there will be policy. I mean, it's not the sort of thing that you can create overnight. Uh, unfortunately, and fortunately and unfortunately, in a civilian, in a, a civilian democracy, a constitutional democracy, uh, unlike uh, military, when they formed the People's Bank by just issuing a decree one day, we can't do that. We have to go through a process, you know, and there will be legislation. You, you, we are also going to need uh, a law to support it. Just as you have um, a mortgage bank is established by law. We have an infrastructure bank, it's established by law. Whatever you want to set up, there must be a process of establishment by legislation. So at the moment, what I think is best for us to do, before we can ever get any kind of transport bank, is to at least put the resources together. What you need is resources, you need funding, and however we can do that, let's even start with that, and then uh, hopefully make progress on all the other suggestions around uh, establishing a financial institution uh, dedicated uh, to, to, to transporters. So those are my thoughts. Uh, what I would want us to do is to continue to uh, find, uh, to use this platform and other platforms to, to interact. I, I believe very strongly that um, just a meeting such as this, where we're even not, we're not even gathering anywhere. We've been able to make a lot of progress in terms of hearing you and um, uh, thinking about what next to do. So I can assure you that um, we will take on board all of your suggestions. We'll work hard on trying to see that we uh, are able to meet uh, your expectations and meet, your, uh, and meet uh, all of the various uh, challenges that uh, the road transport sector faces and that our nation faces. So thank you very, very much again. Uh, Honourable Minister, thank you. And thank you very much, uh, leaders of the uh, transport associations and the transport sector in Nigeria. Uh, God bless you. Thank you.